Alright, we're back again. And uh, so now, a couple of things. Um, I wanted to do this in the previous video, and I, I thought I had, but then when I looked at the recording, it seemed that something happened to the camera. So I'm, I'm more or less hoping this is working as we go forward here. So I have some half round uh, from Evergreen. So Evergreen Plastics, EvergreenScaleModels.com, what have you. So they make a ton of different plastic extrusion. Um, very useful for any kind of scale modeling, but they really come in handy with the airplane models that I do. Um, come in handy, that, that's an old guy way of saying, shit, this stuff's cool. But anyway, um, again, I digress. So, first things first. Uh, I'm doing the infill, and on um, aircraft constructed like this, where the upper wing is nestled into the fuselage, it doesn't sit on top of it, it doesn't rest on top of cabane struts, it's actually inserted into the fuselage here, into this cradle. And, and so what you have to do when you're building these is make sure that the cradle is flat and straight and square. Uh, you know, if it's not, that wing isn't going to sit in there flat and even and square. It's going to be <coughs> all over the map and you're going to have to use all kinds of shims and fill a lot of gaps. So you want to start with a nice uh, square cradle and in when infilling especially these these two rails here these rails that make up the top rail uh, the support rail of the cradle longitudinally and that's these two rails here uh, they can't they can't be uneven they can't be uh, distorted or you want to try not to distort them and so like when I do infill here, I have to be really careful that these infill pieces are not oversized or undersized. Um, I mean, just as you do all over the airplane, but here in particular, you, you just can't be oversized, especially. And the reason for that is if you're forcing these pieces into these openings here, here, and here on either side, uh, you're going to be creating all kinds of distortion. You're going to be applying pressure uh, onto the rail, forcing it upward or bowing it outward or in some other way uh, causing a problem. So at any rate, even if you're just doing, uh, if, not just doing, but even if you're doing a, a f uh, flight model, um, you want to make sure these rails are straight. And the same goes for the cockpit uh, side rail reinforcement up here and the underwing, the bottom wing uh, cradle, same thing. You want to make sure this is all square, that this is nice and straight across here, a uh, nice flat plane right across here. Uh, and again, on the infill pieces around the saddle, uh, you got to be careful just as you have to be around the cradle. Saddle, cradle, call it whatever you want, I guess. It, do it doesn't matter. It's just the area where the where the wings attached to the fuselage that have to be flat and square and even. So you can see the infill is uh, pretty well underway. Um, maybe about 50% on the infill. Uh, maybe not quite that far. A lot of small pieces back here. Uh, the first cell is the only one that's fully complete. That's this number one cell here between uh, bulkhead one and bulkhead two. So the next one is almost finished except for these two. And then the third cell is almost finished, except for these four. Uh, the last model I built, I went ahead and infilled here. I wanted a, a, a larger gluing area than just four and a half and along these spines. I wanted it to really uh, have a mating surface in there. And the reason you don't want to lay something on top of that um, is the same reason that you really don't want to skin also model. 
You know, people ask me, why are you doing the infill? Why don't you just skin it? Why don't you just lay balsa over the top? You know, and you can do that, but what happens is you're growing uh, your model. You're growing it by the thickness of that material, and not just on one side, but on both sides. So if you skin it with 16th material, you're, you're actually enlarging it by an eighth of an inch. And so now you're changing a lot of different mounting dimensions. You're, you might be changing uh, your wing sizes. They're going to be larger if you're, if you're going to skin your wings and skin the fuselage, do the, all the components of the airplane the same way. Um, you've, just, you've just grown the airplane a little bit, you know, which isn't entirely problematic. Um, but, you know, now if you've grown the model by eighth, image, eighth of an inch overall, but not your wheel pants, you know, you've got these smallish looking wheel pants, now you've got this smallish looking cowling, and uh, and then you have fit issues if you've got plastic components that have to go onto the airplane. Now you've got to start taking the parts that have been provided based on the size of the model as it was intended, and carving and cutting away to make them now fit the uh, slightly enlarged model that you're building. So that's why I don't skin them. That's why I. Uh, that's why I do infill. I don't want to change the model. I want it to be true to the shape that the that the kit designer, the person who drew up these plans, um, I want it to be true to that vision, um, to that effort, and not change that. So that as I build these, and when you look at the videos and you see the airplanes and they're finished you know, completed status. Um, they tend to look proportionally right. They look like solid representations of the aircraft that they are intended to model. And that's mostly due to the way that, you know, the airplane is designed, that the kit is designed, the bulkheads were shaped <coughs> a certain way and designed to be spaced a certain distance apart and you know, the uh, exterior skin of that airplane, uh, the dimensions of it are to the plan. They're, they're to the prototype. Anyway, um, all that aside, so that's that's why I do infill. And, and the little things I'm bringing forth here are just to be uh, cautious about. I've made, you know, mistakes in the past in this area where I've, you know, kind of not done a good job of fitting uh, the infill and then not been able to really um, proceed with the project uh, at some point. Um, you know, so much rework is required that it just becomes a sort of a lost cause. So anyway, uh, that's a little bit of background on that. Now, getting back to the evergreen stuff and what I thought I would do on camera here, I don't know how much room there is in there. But I want to complete these sidewalls here, and the way I want to do that is with cardstock. I just want to line uh, the balsa sides here. I've already card put cardstock down for the floor uh, across the top of the uh, birch ply. This is just cardstock on either side. These low uh, tub side walls. So now what I want to do is, is finish this out with cardstock up to this lip, and then what I want to do is come back then and create a full framework. Uh, cockpit framing in this was tubular uh, aluminum, so we'll just simulate that with the uh, with the half round plastic. And once the cardstock's in there, then we'll just you know kind of create uh, sidewalls that would appear to be tubular, but just in in appearance, just as a, as a quick cursory glance into the cockpit, you see instrument faces, you'll see a, a bit of cockpit framing, you'll see a throttle quadrant, the seat, a pilot bust will be in there, um, probably removable. Um, and, you know, rudder pedals and all the other sorts of furnishings that you would have in a, in a standard uh, mid-30s biplane uh, aircraft. So uh, I thought I would do some of that on camera and show you kind of how I do that stuff so anyway here we go uh, get a nice 
piece of flat cardstock. This is a little creased, but it doesn't matter because I'm just going to, um, you know, uh, I don't have these are my broken calipers. Well, let's see what we've got. Typically, there'd be the tangs on the other side here, but they're they're gone on this. I don't know where my other calipers have gone to. This looks about right here. Which is about 70, 78 millimeter. So we're just going to come up 78 millimeters from the bottom. Okay, so as you see when I get on camera, that's when the mistakes start to fly. And I start dropping things. And actually, the truth is, this is just how it goes all day long, whether the camera's on or not. This a, a razor cut. Well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, so that'll fit. So then what we want to do is take the you know clean side, uh, drop it down, and here's where we get easy peasy. So. We're going to create a sh just a small lip at the bottom, and the way we do that is just by uh, creasing it here. Let's get on a flat surface; that might be better. And I'm going to make a razor cut there because I can see that this is what we want to do here. And just about came through there. We go. Got a lot of dull blades. I just ordered some new blades. But I don't know when they're going to be here. All right, so we just want a little. Yeah, that'll work. So we just want to create a little uh, crease here. Not that wide. Draw it enough through it, and then use the deck. score fold it back on the score line not too much but even so now we drop that in there it's going to come out about halfway across that deck there that we have and then I just want to hold it there come out here and draw a line right where the sidewall ends, which is right here. And what we want to do there, since we want to wrap this just a little bit, not all the way out, but partially, but about the same as what we've got here, I think. Maybe even a little less than that. So now we're going to cut, we're going to stand off our line and cut straight across here at about that distance. There we have more or less a straight line. So now this folded this way. 
made a score cut across the inside. And that's narrower than our ruler, so we have to hold it up at an angle. And we just want to be kind of on that line that we know is on the other side. And we want to be on that. So now we're just going to draw the blade across. And this time we're folding it the other way. So we end up with a Z fold, sort of, I think is what they call that. This doesn't want to come over. This way. Actually, we'll have to go this way because I've got the cork on that side. I do a lot of muttering. You probably can't even hear me, but let's see. You see how we've got that score line on the edge of the ruler there? So then you just want to finish that out. the deck to finish the fold out until we get sort of a straight a straightish line here yep. I think Charlie's at the door hold on pretty good here. We're just inside. We're laying right on top of our, our deck in here. A little more light. So we're laying right on the deck here and we're right on there on the uh, cockpit sill right there. Again this, there's a combing piece that's going to come across here. right? So we're not worried about this, um, you know, being in or out or clean or not. And we want it. We don't want to have to do too much out here. So that's why I want 